Beery Ram here. Welcome to Cheat Day. James, I'm sorry you couldn't make it because you live in the States, but I will have an extra pie for you. Today we're having Peaks Pies in the West End, Vancouver, and I have a special guest today coming through. His name is Victor. Uh, Victor is a fellow photographer. I met him through my cousin Ronald, and we are going to share some pies and have a quick chat about what is going on in his life right now. But I'm really stoked about these pies, so let's get started. Breakfast Club, episode one, I have Victor. Hi. He is a photographer, he works. He got some really cool shit on his Instagram. Yeah. So I'm gonna link him in the description below and you'll see some pictures floating by right now. Um, but we're here at Peak Pies and we're having their breakfast pies. Um, the first pie we have is the Ned Kelly, which is ground beef, gravy, onion, and bacon, and a fresh cracked egg with some melted cheddar cheese on top. Uh, lactose intolerant people, you've been warned. The second pie we have is the Rise and Shine, uh, which is a scrambled egg, bacon, onion, green pepper, shredded potato, and cheddar cheese. And to top off this extremely rich breakfast, we are going to have an apple crumble pie. Um, so we're going to dig in, uh, we'll go with the Ned Kelly first, which is the cheddar one. The pie crust is really good. It's really crispy. Very crispy. Yeah. The cheese, cheese adds like a little spark of sharpness to it. Uh, just to note, the rise and shine is fantastic. Oh. Scrambled eggs is really good, plus the hash brown on top, extra crispy, lots of texture. I think for Chinese people like us, we like our breakfast savory. Yeah. Hong Kong style, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, first bite in this apple crumble pie. That's pretty amazing. Hands down. That is, that is amazing. I'm a huge apple pie critic. I think I once said that Whole Foods has one of the best apple pies. Yeah, but this, this just blew it out of the water. Oh, it smells really nice. The pasta is really thick and really crunchy. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So I have some questions for you. Okay, so let's keep photography as a theme. What do you love most about photography? Is it the actual taking process? Is it post? What part of it excites you when you when you go over to take some photos? I think what excites me the most is uh, when I see something uh, like the lighting condition. Like yeah. we have a sun, sunset, mm -hmm. like the golden hours. Yeah. Oh, man, you, you get all these amazing shots because you know suddenly like the sun is going down and at this angle, um, there's like a lot of crazy color going on. Yeah. So like I tend to look for like you know good lighting first. Yeah, and I, I see this as a theme in his photos, is that the lighting is very dramatic or yeah. very impactful in a way that it's, it's bold and it's very eye-catching. But I, I totally agree with you, it's lighting and timing. Yeah. Because if you don't have the right timing, then you right. can't compose the perfect photo. Right. And I think that's what excites me about most about photography, is that you never know when the right timing comes along. And right. when you catch that right timing, right. it's so exciting. Right. Like the high right. is so high when you, when yeah, you catch yeah. that perfect photo. Everything yeah. works, you know, the lighting yeah, yeah. works, the scene works, it's... Because if you miss that, like, you know, one second, then the, then the scene is gone. I actually shoot a lot uh, with my iPhone. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so, you know, it's always in my pocket, you know. When I see it, I'll just like, oh, I'll take it out at night. And I think the iPhone really has changed the game in terms of mobile photography. It seems so much easier for us to press the button, swipe, and take a photo. Right, right. Whereas, if you have a camera, you're gonna pull out your bag, turn it on, wait for it to turn on, and then focus, and yeah, it's almost it, too it, late. it's already gone. <laughs> yeah, at that time, the scene is already gone. And like, nowadays, our cameras are so good, it's, it's almost comparable. Yeah, I think for, for daytime photography, like, uh, the, the, yeah, the iPhone is actually very capable of uh, uh, taking, like, you know, DSLR, like, Mm -hmm. But uh, for night photography, you know, because the sensor is smaller yeah. than the iPhone, so for sure the you know the actual digital camera is a lot better mm -hmm. in those kind of uh, conditions. But for daytime, I, I would you know I would actually prefer to use my iPhone over my uh, my actual camera. Yeah. And I think uh, most recently, like people are jumping into the Sony because mm -hmm. their video um, recording capability is really nice. Just a reminder, this is filmed on a Sony RX100 Mach 5. <laughs> if you want to buy this camera, it's linked below. Don't have to buy it for me. Just letting you know. <laughs> so have you thought of ever monetizing your photography or even doing stock photography? Recently, I've been um, mostly like, helping friends out, you know, just 
taking photos for them. Yeah, yeah like yeah. wedding photos or kid uh, photos. More, more on like the like family photos. Okay. That type of photography. Yeah. So I did a, a little research on your Instagram account. So I'm gonna pull up a picture and just have a little bit more context. You holding a skateboard. <laughs> when I looked at it at first, I said, that looks like the half no, pipes. No. I needed more context of <laughs> no. what was going on here. No, no, no. <laughs> so this this picture is actually uh, it's taken on the sky train. Oh. Yeah. So this is actually my first time uh, riding a longboard to yeah. the sky train. Second photo I found that needed more context was this one. There's there could be a couple stories in this one. <laughs> there could be a story here, there could be a story here, but we'll go with you. What, what was going on here? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, so I was uh, trying to take a photo with my camera on a timer. Yeah. So I think it did uh, 10, 10 frames. Uh, so it, did, it, did, it took like 10 frames <laughs> during that time. And it happens to get that shot to, you know, it looks like the, uh, the Jackie Chan meme. You know, yeah. The, 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 yeah, yeah. You know, coming at a bad moment here. Has anyone given you any good advice or bad advice? For bad advice, it's mostly, you know, when people tell you, you know, not to do something because yeah. of such and such reason, then I think you should actually do it. Because, I mean, like, a lot of people, they I think your idea might be crazy. It's like, oh, no, that's crazy. Like, you shouldn't do that. Right? But, I mean, that's the time you should, you know, step up and actually try to go, like, you know, go ahead of it and instead of, like, you know, letting other people stop you. I mean, it's like the reward is greater if you do something that's scary, mm -hmm. do something that has high risk, right, right. versus if you're playing it safe, then you're not really progressing, right? Is that, yeah, is that yeah. how you see it? If you're not really taking risks in your life, then your, your life will be pretty boring. I think it's well worth the risk, especially doing something small, even if it's a small investment, like buying camera gear. You know, my, my gear is a small investment compared to how much I can create afterwards. It's taking a risk, yeah, it's, it's taking a hit in my bank account, but I think in the end it pays off because it's just a small investment, right? There's always going to be naysayers, there's always going to be people who are on the safer side of the fence. Right. It depends if you want to listen to them or just ignore the noise and just go on and do what you want to do. Like if you do screw up, I think it's a great opportunity to learn from it. Right. If you can learn from it and move on and improve on it, I think that's probably one of the greatest things you can do. Right. But, you know, messing up and constantly messing up and repeating your mistakes, that's a totally different thing. Right, right. If you can make a mistake and improve on it and not repeat it, then mm -hmm. there's no problem with making mistakes. I think this concludes our Breakfast Club video. I want to thank Victor for coming by to share these pies with me. I definitely could not have eaten three pies alone. So it's nice to have someone so that we can share three different pies and just talk about stuff. Yeah, thanks for inviting yeah, me. No for, problem. But it's good breakfast. So I'll link his Instagram account below and also his info in the screen here. And I will see you at the next restaurant. Thanks for watching. Yep. See ya.